Hi, I'm Dr. Adrienne Sprouse for your Environmental Minute. Today we're on location in Phoenix, Arizona at the National Conference of the American Academy of Environmental Medicine. We have the world's collection of experts in environmental medicine and today we're going to be interviewing Dr. Dennis Hooper, who's the Medical Director for Real Time Labs in Carrollton, Texas. Hi, Dr. Hooper. Thank you so much for being here. Hello, and thank you for having me. Tell me a little bit about you, what you do, and what your lab does. My background is in uh, pathology, and uh, I'm, uh, I was trained in the Navy as a pathologist, and I also have a PhD in microbiology. Microbiology studies of um, microbes, bacteria, uh, viruses, and fungus, and which is mold and also pathology is the study of tissue and body fluids. And I've always been interested in uh, cases of difficult uh, diagnosis. I notice that patients in HIV, cancer patients, and environmental patients were all uh, having difficulty in being diagnosed with a fungal infection or mold infection. So we started looking for them and we found them. We found them in body fluids, nasal secretions, and we found them in uh, tissues, and we found them in urine. And that's how we started doing this test years ago. Do any other labs perform the same tests as your lab? Uh, universities do them, and research uh, areas do them, but uh, commercially, no, we're the only laboratory. How does mold get you sick? Um, mycotoxins are the poisons that these molds produce. They produce them because they want to kill other molds or other bacteria so they can continue to eat. And when they do that, we start breathing those toxins in because they can aerosolize very easily. They can, they can actually get on the dust particles of dust that's in your house. Right now we have millions of little dust particles floating by us and our noses and our respiratory systems are filtering that those out. So they get stuck in our, our sinuses, and they sit there, and they cause problems. They can either, the, if it's bacteria and fungus, they can grow, or if it's the toxins, they can cause problems with our cells in that area. If I know that I've had mold, and I've had my house cleaned, and I feel that I still have some symptoms going on, how am I able to tell my doctor about you, even though my doctor may think I'm okay? Now we have a, um, a patient navigator who the patients can actually call and talk with her. She's a, a registered nurse who can talk with them about their symptoms and give them suggestions, not on treatment, not on diagnosis, but who to go see. And who has worked with our laboratory in the past and who believes that mold toxins are a concern. So these patients can call the navigator, she can help them, and if they want more help, they can call our laboratory and the medical director can talk with them, which is me. People may not know that mycotoxins can be passed from mother to infant through the breast milk. Can you tell us something about that? We believe, and we have now have evidence to show that these toxins or the mold poisons can be transferred from the mom, mom's breast milk, to the baby. So we get the breast milk and we extract it just like we do anything else and then we um, do the tests on it. And we have found aflatoxin, ochratoxin, and trichothecenes in those, in those solutions over the period of time. What made you want to do this kind of work? So with breast cancer, uh, hypothyroidism, hyperthyroidism, multiple endocrine problems. Um, we have found it in patients who have had multiple sclerosis. And actually when they're treated for the mycotoxins, uh, their symptoms of quote ALS and MS um, subside. Now, I'm not convinced that they're totally cured but the symptoms and the, the causation, the association of the symptoms and the mycotoxins certainly appear to be related enough to be concerned about those. I don't know if I said that right, but 
I would I would want. Uh, I talked with an individual in uh, San Diego last week who was diagnosed with ALS, and um, he saw a open-minded physician who believed that perhaps this was an environmental toxin involvement. First, don't don't rule this out. This was a physician who was diagnosed with ALS, and he was in treated to get rid of the toxins and he does not have a diagnosis of ALS now. So, I mean that, if nothing else happens in my life, it's pretty neat to know that you can help a patient who has ALS or MS because that is an extremely painful way to die. And to see how they, they have to live in their last few months of, of life is not good. And if you can, if you can say that I got rid of these molds or I helped them get rid of these molds, kind of makes you feel really good. Dr. Hooper, you've been so helpful and thanks so much for what your lab does. And thank you for being a guest on our show. Thank you. It was an honor being uh, here to, to meet with you and I look forward to many years of working with you. I'm Dr. Adrienne Sprouse and this is your Environmental Minute.